All right, recording has begun, and I'll begin my presentation. Okay, let's spin that up. Da -da -da. Infinity window pending. All right, can everybody see my screen? Mm, yep. Yeah, yep. Can, yep. See can everybody see my screen? Yep. Is that an affirmative? Yes. yes. Yeah, can you hear us? Yes, yes. Okay. Maybe he lost the audio. Maybe. Can you guys can you guys hear me? Can I get a thumbs up in the chat if, if you guys can see? Awesome. Okay. I just wanted to be sure before we get started. Awesome. Okay. We just had a pizza delivery, forgive me. All right, so here we are, uh, for Geeks Academy Geek Talk. Now, this is the only this is only the second cohort uh, for data science, so you guys should feel special. I know it's not number one, but number two is going to have to do the trick for this time. Okay, let's go ahead. All right, so a little bit about for Geeks, what we are, what we do. So we currently have 10 locations in seven countries. Now, this, frankly, is out of date. We Even since... This uh, PowerPoint has been made. It's it's increased. You know, we have campuses in the USA, Venezuela, Spain, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Mexico, Argentina, Uruguay, Portugal, <laughs> and just add to that list. Very soon, we have 4,500 plus graduates. 85% of Four Geeks graduates go on to find a job within three months. Our partnerships are established with major industry players, and we're one of the top boot uh, coding boot camps in the world. If you ask my personal opinion, we're the very best, but anyway, I don't know if we can put that down legally. <laughs> okay, and how do you know this? Well, if you ask Forbes, they say we're a top five full stack boot camp in 2024. If you ask Forbes, it says we're a top five data science boot camp in 2024. Of course, you guys care more about that since you're a data science cohort. And uh, give me a second here to compose myself. This is very hard to pronounce, so I'm going to try my best. Premios Excelencia Educativa, Best Coding Boot Camps of 2023. Okay, we got Switch Up Top 30 Worldwide Boot Camps, and we have a 4.9 average review on all, across all platforms. And I, I think this one actually is, is the one that stands out the most to me because accreditation is very important when, when it comes to trust. We are licensed by the U.S. Department of Education. We might have to start that over. All right, Samir, you knew exactly what he was going to say, right? Um, well, I, I, I kind of, but I that doesn't mean I want to fill in the rest. But uh, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll give him a minute to, to come back. Yeah, give me a sec, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to reach out to him right now. Are you guys gonna celebrate after uh, it's over with today? Anybody celebrating? No, nah, man. No just celebration? Cause, just because the boot camp done. Huh? Don't mean, just because the boot camp done, don't mean we done. Yeah, we're not done, now. but it's a feat, right? It's That's a true. feat that most most people don't get over, right? Like if you're not going to college, like I think about Simon. Simon went to college, got computer science degrees and all that stuff and still struggled to get in. And so, mm -hmm. A lot of times, just taking this step right here, having that actual practice, is better than having a degree. So this is a feat, man. I think I think you guys should do some level of celebration, man. Whatever that may be. Raise your hand and stretch it yeah, out. And this is a feat, man. Back. Huh. You made it this far, man. It's not easy. Hey, the, the, can everybody, can everybody hear me? We yeah. can hear you now. Yeah, we can. I, I'm not sure what happened there. I, I think uh, our connection dropped. 
Sorry about that. Okay, can anybody uh, tell me where we left off? I'll After get... the Department of Education thing, is that roughly okay. that? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I'll hop back into Trust. that. Trust. Yeah, I think got we're it. about to start with the slide that says track record. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Well, that's too bad. We had a whole rhythm going, but it's all good. Okay, so we'll carry on from this point here. So what's our track record? Okay, so our aim here is to reduce the rate of underemployment, provide accessibility, and increase the amount of digital talent available. 22%. That is the average increase in salary our students see upon completing the program. 86% of our students go on to get hired within, within three months of completing their cohort. Okay. Let's go ahead to the next slide. Okay, GeekPal, what is GeekPal? Unlimited access to our mentors, to our support staff forever. It's a, it's a lifetime commitment. We're always gonna be here to support you when you're struggling. Now, I will say that this is probably the, the part of the boot camp that I think goes most underappreciated. This asset is just, it's hard to it's hard to properly assess its value. Like you can watch a YouTube video, you can you know Google something, you can even ask ChatGPT. But the precision of support that you get, meaning like you have a specific problem on a specific project, can somebody hop on a meeting and help you solve it? That's what we do here, and this is accessible to you until you until you croak. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead to the next slide. Now, we understand that the technical part of the part of the process is only half of the process. The other half is you got to get employed, right? A lot of people who join here, their aim is to go on and, and get employed. So that's why we have our geek force. Headed by Valentina Ancieta, we basically formulate a strategy and implement plans to ensure that you get a job. Now, that's why we see such a high success rate is because we focus on the fundamentals. It's like proper procedures when applying for jobs, you know, sending DMs, like being aggressive about it, being persistent, because just because you can do something doesn't mean other people know you can do it, right? And that's the most important part is, is the proof of concept, right? Is the proof of work. Does the person hiring you believe that you can complete the task at hand? Geek Force is here to help you prove it. All right, so we talked before about our partnerships. Well, we wanna talk about 400 plus companies who have hired our students. Now, I know you guys see on screen a lot of big names, but the one I wanna focus in on is Michael Page. <laughs> I, I try to pick a new one every time I give this presentation. Obviously, it's a joke. The ones you wanna focus on are Microsoft, Uber, Facebook. But a lot of large companies have hired our graduates. We do that a bit to flex, but really to point out something, those larger companies, have more rigorous hiring procedures. And you know, our boot camp graduates are getting hired there. So if they get hired there, they can frankly get hired anywhere. Okay, let's move forward. Now our official partnerships include some of those same companies, but also different companies. Obviously Miami Dade College. <laughs> Is that no JS or RS? Interesting framing there. Anyways. We, we partner with a lot of places here in Miami and abroad, and they help our students, give them a leg up in the process when they're, when they're looking for a job, when they're trying to make everything that they've done up to this point concrete. Okay, let's advance. All right, so for tonight's guest speaker, we have Tamante Leary, JD, MBA. He's a content developer at Microsoft. He's a co-founder of Blacks at Microsoft. He's lead at Blacks at Microsoft South Florida, founder at ByteCon Foundation, Onyx, Black Men Talk Tech, CEO, entrepreneur, mentor, and DEIA advocate. Now, I know that's a long list. I'm not, I'm not sure if Tamante is with us just yet. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, let's back up. Yeah, Tamante just messaged me. He's, <clears throat> he's actually joining. Um, he's at a... A Black Set Microsoft event right now, and he's stepping out of the event to to come speak with you guys. But he said he'll be on in five minutes. But he said that like 
two minutes ago. So probably in the next like two to three minutes, he'll be, he'll be on. Awesome. Awesome. I, I can, I can uh, t talk a little bit about um, what the procedures are going to look like for tonight. So after Tamante go goes ahead and tells you what he needs to tell you, it's really interesting, by the way. I think you're all going to be interested in hearing what he has to say. Um, but after after that ends, basically what we're going to do is we're going to hop straight into presentations, whichever group wants to go first, or un unless there's already a, a, an order set in, set in mind. After each presentation, we should open it up to questions. Anybody who has, you know, points they want to make or questions about implementation or where, where you expect your project to go from here, we'll open it up for questions right there. And we'll go into the next project and, and we'll conclude with final remarks and we'll all go on our merry way. Now, I want to say this, this is being recorded right now and will be uploaded on the YouTube channel sometime tomorrow. So if you guys want to reflect on your performance it'll be up there for you guys to for you guys to watch and yeah who doesn't like to watch themselves right <laughs> everybody likes to see themselves live okay uh, Alyssa, i don't know if you want to add anything uh maybe we could let samir and uh sebastian maybe say a few words about the cohort before we start while we wait for Tamante to join yeah it's a great idea i'll go ahead and stop my share uh, yeah, I can go. Um, well, this was my first uh, first teaching experience, so obviously it was also my uh, um, uh, first cohort with with four geeks, and uh, just like it was a learning process for the students, it was also a learning process for me, uh, but a very rewarding experience, I have to say. Uh, this is not something I pictured myself doing probably like just a year ago. Um, but, you know, fate brought me here and, you know, I couldn't have asked for a better experience with a, a great, great group of students who every day in class, I, I you know, saw them put in, put in like their hundred percent, um, you know, with their projects and, uh, you know, to learn the material. And I, I'm just proud of you guys for, for reaching this point. Um, you know, obviously we, we looked at your presentations on Wednesday. But um, you know, you know, I'm, I'm I'm happy that you guys are now going to be sharing it with uh, um, you know a broader group, and um, I wish you guys all the best in your future, your future career, um, and also you guys have my contact, so I hope to stay in touch with each of you, uh, you know, to get regular updates on you know what you guys are doing, where you guys are going to be working, and um, you know, and uh, thank you, thank you guys for making it a great experience for me. And also thank you to four geeks for giving me this opportunity. Well said, well said. Well, I need to add something about the words from Samir. Um, well, guys, uh, I don't have the same the same experience with Samir because I take this course lately that are, are starting. Uh, for me, it was a pleasure to, to share some knowledge with you, some time with you and try to uh, make some responses for your answer. Uh, in my case, uh, I recommend you to you continue learning, guys. You have uh, you are amazing. You have uh, some work right now that uh, well to represent you all the learning that you get from project. But I recommend you guys to you continue adding or or doing some changes in your careers. Try to reconvert yourself uh, to the IT companies or whatever. And well, uh, I'm here every time that you, you need something from, from my side. For me, it was a pleasure to, to work with you guys. Thanks, Sebastian. Any students want to give a few words? Sorry, we just need to buy like one or two minutes. Yeah, I don't mind, you know, giving a couple words. Um, I came into this, you know, into this this boot camp, you know, with the intent of making sure I get some some practical work, and you know, um, there was a lot of um, knowledge that I gained that I didn't think that I would possibly have coming out of it. So um, again, it gave me the platform to have a lot of structure and everything going into the workforce, and I can really appreciate that um, from Four Geeks. And, and aside to that, the, the crew of guys that I worked with, the instructor. Uh, Sebastian, those guys were very, very helpful, available at all times. And 
was able to help us out um, throughout the course of you know us learning and things like that. So I really appreciate Four Geeks for offering up this opportunity. Um, it was a pleasure. And again, I left here with a with a, with a plethora of knowledge. And like Sebastian said, um, it's just a lot more to learn. But I was allowed to walk out with a lot of a structure, if anything. Thank you, Omar. Anybody else want to add anything? Yeah, I guess I could put like my two cents. Um, yeah, I agree with Omar. Like I kind of came into this boot camp like not really knowing too much of um, kind of like the whole world of like technology or like programming, especially machine learning. Um, so me coming into not like this boot camp, not knowing anything and looking back at everything I've learned, um, having not only like learned a lot, but also given like a path to walk um it's something like i'm really grateful for and i'm like happy that, that you know we all got to this uh position and that we've all learned something from someone as well um so yeah but yeah i agree with them where it was on it was, it was, it was a lot Nice. I also wanted to share with you guys that 4Geeks has uh, opened two additional offices. So we do have an office now in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> Got some feedback there on campus. But um, so if you guys are ever in those areas, uh, we now have physical campuses there. And the other big thing that we're working on is, is the Microsoft challenge, which I'm sure you've seen that I posted in your Slack channels. Um, so to Monte, he just joined. He works at Microsoft. He's also the founder of Bicon, which is an organization that helps minority and underrepresented groups break into tech. So um, I'm going to let him kind of explain to you about the challenge and, and let you ask him questions and, and things like that. It looks like he's just getting connected right now. You there, Tamante? You're muted. Give me one second. Give me like T minus one minute. I want to um, get situated in my car real quick. But congratulations, everybody. Um, Y'all are incredible for completing your 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 program. No easy feat. Um, and you know now's the time to. Um, to go out and uh, you know apply your skills, so to speak. Um, give me one second. All right, get some light in here. Um, you know, now now is the time for you all to go out and apply your skills and and whenever you have an opportunity especially when it comes to you know major companies like microsoft which is where i work uh, i've been at microsoft for it'll be five years in august um you know you definitely want to step up and take advantage of any time you have an opportunity to showcase not only your skills for the boot camp but also we are having um the microsoft innovation challenge which um is is essentially it's an eight week long challenge um that we are um have the goal to engage with a thousand learners around our can y'all hear me okay because i remember last time but it wasn't great audio can you hear me okay yeah awesome okay um we have the goal to engage a thousand learners around our azure um developer credentials Three of them in particular, um, our Azure um, AI engineer credential, our Azure uh, data engineer credential, and our Azure developer credential. Um, that's the AZ204, the AI102, and the DP203 um, credentials. We, um, these are very industry, um, in-demand industry um, credentials and they're also very a very rare skill set um, that we are skilling up learners on, and so the challenge as far as the sign up period is in this is this week and next week. But um, my organization, Bitecom, we're also going to be starting the live um, 
webinars next week as well and office hours. Um, so to tell you a little bit about the challenge, there's two phases. The first phase is um, essentially the learning phase. Like um, it's a combination of asynchronous learning on your end. Um, we need to create a Microsoft Learn profile and most of the learning material and learning content, um, actually all of it, um, would be um, would be you know housed in our Microsoft Learn site. Um, uh, so for those of you who don't know about it or who, if, you, if you don't have a profile, you know, go ahead and, and do that. Um, we always have free learnings, but the great thing about this challenge is we're providing vouchers for learners to take their certification exam, which would normally cost between $150 to $200. That's usually, you know, the biggest thing for people, right? Like you can get the learning, you can get the material, but when it comes to the cost of the exam, um, you know, is where, where a lot of folks, you know, kind of stop, right? So we're providing vouchers for, um, for these certification exams. And you essentially have eight weeks to, to prepare to pass the certification exam through the challenge um, asynchronously. And then we have, we're gonna have learning sessions um, as well with the Microsoft trainers um weekly over the next eight weeks starting next week um as well as office hours so um with with that <clears throat> the second phase is the hackathon and the hackathon is going to be invite only for those who um have have earned their a credential um the hackathon starts may 29th it's sponsored by microsoft so it's a, it's a microsoft hackathon from May 29th to June 10th. And um, there is cash prize money for first, second, third place. First place, $10,000. Uh, we got two $5,000 second place prizes and three $2,500 third place prizes. Um, I, I believe teams of four or five, and you can also have like a coach or a captain. Um, you know, I wanna emphasize this challenge is ideal for learners like you who um, have familiarity with like, you know, some Py with Python and, you know, other languages. Um, you know, it's, I like to level set expectations when it comes to, to you know, people um, pursuing this challenge because it's not, um, you know, it's not in the best interest for someone to try to do it who has, you know, no technical acumen or who doesn't have like any familiar with, for example, Python, right? So you all are in a good, great, great um, position to not only do well, um, but also to, you know, hopefully get the credential, get invited to the hackathon. Um, we will be, you know, shining, shining a light uh, from the Microsoft side um, of, on, you know, different, you know, participants and, and, you know, especially, you know, highlighting, um, you know, those who, you know, of course, if you win and such. So we'll be kind of bringing attention to, to you know, to this, um, this whole challenge. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. We're going to have the schedule um, by the end of the week. We're going to have the schedule for our organization with our trainers posted on the website. Um, we'll, um you know, have the links as well for, for, for you to be able to, you know, join the sessions and, and the uh, office hours. And we're very excited, um, you know, to, to bring this opportunity to you all. So please sign up. Um, Alyssa has quite a bit of information, but pretty much everything to get you all going um, from, you know, getting registered to, you know, starting on your learning path um i would advise you all to go ahead and get registered and start kind of like learning on your own and that way you can come with questions um you know like for the live sessions and office hours um you know this is mostly an asynchronous challenge but we wanted to make sure to have um definitely the live component with microsoft trainers um to help you all along um, so with that, is there, are there any questions and congratulations again, everybody, uh, 
this, you know, the last thing I know, actually, the last thing I'll say is, you know, the hope is um, you all will go far in this challenge. And then when given the next opportunity, which will be soon, you'll be able to really showcase, you know, kind of your stuff and you'll be able to demonstrate the skills that you have, not only from the boot camp, but also from the challenge. And then, of, of course, with that, you know, the hope is that you'll get into the, you know, you'll get into a, um, you'll be in a good position, right, as far as your your prospects. So, you know, can't make any guarantees, but definitely you'll have a rare skill set uh, that will allow you to stand out and and you'll, you know, be able to show your stuff. Is there any questions? Are there any questions? Yeah, Tamante, real quick on, on, on the office hours versus the live sessions, can you just What's the difference? Yeah, so the live sessions are going to be more for learning, and the office hours is going to be for your Q and A, based off of the session and based off of the. That's a good question. I left out one part. There are virtual labs as well um, associated with this challenge, and so the office hours will also be to address questions for the virtual labs. And can we connect with you directly with LinkedIn? Is that okay? Yeah, or yeah, a lot of, a lot of, yeah, yeah. yeah please do. Um, I spoke last week as well, and I've been getting 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 more connections. So yeah, please <laughs> connect with me. Yeah, send them over, no problem. Um, would love to connect with all of you all. Um, and you know, I wish you all the best of luck if you do decide to if you do decide to pursue, you know, our Microsoft Innovation Challenge. We're, we will have leaderboards and such, so we will be able to see that uh, that data. Um, you know, from the different participants in the challenge. I have a question. Um, uh, hey, Tamante, nice to meet you. I'm Brian. Thank you for your uh, kind words. Um, so I'm looking at the challenges and I see that there's like leaderboards, um, but everybody has kind of like the same medal. So what kind of challenge is this? Is, is this kind of like, you know, like there's going to be like number one, number two, number three, or is it just going to be like, can everyone do this? Oh, yeah, no. So everyone can do this, but I think we, we will have like leaderboards as far as like tracking like progress and people's mm. you know, like through the challenge. Uh, the challenge is open for everyone. Um, and so it is a remote challenge. Right. Mm. Um, you know, and, you know, so anyone anyone can do it. Um, but like I said, you know, those who who will have the most success will be those that, you know, have some familiarity with, you know, coding language in particular Python. But, yeah, anyone can do it. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So I appreciate you all inviting me in to talk to you. Um, thank you for uh, your time and congratulations again. Um, I will, I'll see you all along the, the Microsoft Innovation Challenge path and, you know, look forward to seeing some great things um, from all of you all. Fantastic. Thank you, Tamante. By the way, all details will be shared in your Slack channel. So if, if you're worried that you're going to miss anything, you won't. We promise. <laughs> all right. Now uh, we can go ahead and get get started with presentation. So for our first group, we have HealthCast with Alfredo, Eugene, and Omar. Feel free to take it away. Yep, sure. Thanks, Isaiah. I want to share your screen. Um, Alfredo. Yeah, can, you, can you guys see my screen? Make sure that. Yep. So, uh, jumping right in, guys. Uh, so uh, today's uh, application and topic is going to be about HealthCast. Um, and what it is is a, a prediction app that forecasts whether you're going to be um, healthy, pre-diabetic, or whether that would be diabetic. So. Um, I'm going to first uh, introduce myself. My name is Omar Smith. I do have 10 plus years in the IT industry. I've worked with um, different customers um, around different migrations, um, AI partners and things like that. And so my idea in coming into the boot camp was to get a uh, better structure and understanding around uh, getting involved in uh, the day to day uh, changes in life and being a part of the future. So uh, with that said, I'm going to pass it on to uh, my counterparts. Eugene? Hi, I'm Eugene Cruz, and I am I'm joined the boot camp because I'm looking for uh, learning about data science I'm, because my background, I've, I have over a decade of, of being a teacher. I teach computer science and 
mathematics. I come from a mathematics background. And so uh, that's me, basically a, a decade in education, but an, an education that's closely related to problem solving and technology. So Alfredo. Yes, my name is Alfredo Castaneda. I took a sabbatical because I really wanted to do a career change. And I've look, been looking at data science for about four years. My background is medical device. I've been an engineer about 30 plus years. So I've been in product development and making things in hardware. But really, I've been attracted to the idea of AI for quite some time, um, particularly what's going on in South Florida. That's one of the reasons I, I've seen so many opportunities coming in this area. And, uh, and I'm really excited to be able to take part in a boot camp like this that was really challenging and, uh, and really got in, to go into that and meet the people and interact with folks uh, doing this. So really looking forward to it. Sharing with you guys the presentation. You want to go back? No, I think we can go on to the next slide, Alfredo. All right. So again, jumping into this evening's agenda here, we're going to go in and talk about uh, the project, uh, some important statistics, statistics around the project, some key aspects of the project. Uh, we talk about the platform and architecture, um, the libraries, different libraries that we use for uh, the app, but also the challenges and the features, and then we'll open the floor for some additional questions. So what is this project about? So um, we first started out you know, looking at the requirements that was given to us for this project. Uh, and I think you know, we come to an agreement that we wanted to find a way as students that we could be of help, right, to uh, the masses and the public. And so we also agreed that there, the healthcare vertical was something that we had some experience in and we thought, well, okay, let's go um, in the healthcare industry. And so uh, we did, about a re uh, week of research and, and found um, a data set that met our requirements, uh, actually three data sets that met the requirements that we were looking for. And so we wanted to uh, uh, solve a problem around uh, type 2 diabetes. And so uh, what is type 2 Di Di diabetes is when uh, your body's insufficiently uh, producing insulin and it kind of resisted. And so this in particular was a survey uh, that of a data set that we found. And, um, there was some limitations after doing uh, some research and, and you know bringing in some experts that we use uh, against the different features uh, that we uh, went along with to put together the application. So one of the things that stood out to us in terms of how do how can we help? What's the objective here? Uh, was to try and fill that gap. Right there's a large amount uh, of people uh, that are going to be either pre-diabetic, I mean diabetic, and are healthy. And it's, it's very hard to determine what pre-diabetic is, right? Unless you're taking like this A1C test, which basically gives you, you know, um, the different levels. I think uh, 5.7 uh, is normal levels and between 5.7 and 6.4 would be pre-diabetic in this A1C. And then there's 6.4 and above would be on the um, threshold of you being uh, a diabetic. And so we wanted to kind of, you know, put together an application uh, um, on the class, I'm looking at these different classes and decide, okay, how can we um, incentivize people being that uh, there, you can't really determine how you can be pre-diabetic and incentivize them to go take the test, right? Uh, get extra care. So we wanted to put together this app that was geared toward um, maybe insurance companies, for instance, that can incentivize their employee, um, their, their customers, with, which would be an employee in this case, and then would get these extra discounts uh, from their um, employee, employees to actually take the test and get some extra discounts. And that will help bring the awareness of uh, if you uh, would have to get better coverage and things like that. And or maybe family medical when people went in to uh, get their semi-annual and or annual um, appointments and their visits. And they can go in and say, hey. Uh, looking at this test, this assessment, you may want to take further action. So we kind of targeted those two, two lanes in this application and let the data uh, lead us into uh, how we wanted to approach it. Can you move to the next slide? So again, uh, again, we, uh, we're filling the gap here with pre-diabetic, uh, 4, 413 billion uh, direct estimated costs. So there's a lot of cost that goes into this and we want to encourage, uh, again, more people to actually get pre-diabetes. One in three people have it. 
And most of the time, they don't even know they have it. So uh, with that said, uh, we can move on to the next slide, Alfredo. Key aspects of the project. So there, we talked a lot about the survey data, the data. The data was actually from a survey. It's from the CDC, but it's survey data. So that, that presented a, a couple of issues when we did some research, and we did quite a bit, um, which helped us to figure out what features. We found that a lot of the calculators that are out there um, use other metrics that are involved blood tests and all that. Unfortunately, the data set that we have did not have any of that information. Other things that we found through additional research, because there's a lot of information on diabetes, um, which was helpful, uh, that ethnicity is a factor. And that wasn't clear in the data set. So there was some limitations with the data set in addition to the challenges of, 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 of this project, but that's normal with data science. Um, we'll talk about that in the challenge session. But also the size of the data was, was large. There was about 253,000 respondents in this data set over a number of years. Um, and the third point that's worth mentioning is the imbalance of the data. Most people, most of the respondents were healthy. Um, the other part is the pre-diabetic. If you can see the second bar there on the top right corner, that's the pre-diabetic uh, portion of the population that responded to the, to, to the survey. And then the diabetic is in the far right. So this is one of the, the other challenges that's not unusual in data science, but we, we worked through this through some through some uh, technical uh, aspects such as using synthetic data. We'll talk about that in the analysis. And that was part of the learning through the process. But again, what helped us through this was there was a lot of sufficient information out there that we can use to educate ourselves, to understand about the domain, to help us select the right features that could still predict. A little bit about the app. What is this app and how is it built? It uses Python primarily. It uses the Python libraries. The most common, the pandas, for example, it uses the Siski Learn library. We did explore others, by the way. We'll talk about that. But that's what it's running on right now. It's running on the Siski Learn for the machine model. It's using Joblib to manage the model uh, files themselves. And the, the user interface is through Streamlit. And lastly, it's deployed through render. And I, last one I'm going to talk about is the SQLite, because we're going to talk about the database as, a, as one of those things that we're, we've kind of put into, baked into the system for future expansions. So in general, Python libraries with capabilities for expansion through a database using SQLite, the simple system, it's a simple app, easy to upgrade and easy to scale. And with that, I'm going to switch over to the demo. So, Eugene. Alrighty, so you should be seeing on your screen right now our magnificent web app. There you see the orca whale instilling incredible amounts of trust in the user. But let me tell you about this app. So. Let's say, for example, you're a very young person with a low BMI and you've never been diagnosed with high blood pressure, cholesterol, high cholesterol. You've not smoked. You've never had a stroke. You are physically active and you have never had a heart attack or coronary heart disease. Let's say, for example, you're a male. Let's say you do not have difficulty walking or climbing stairs. When you submit here, you'll see the response, which is telling you that you are at low risk for diabetes. So congratulations to you, hypothetical person. Continue engaging in regular physical activity. Keep eating a balanced diet. Maintain a healthy weight range. Avoid smoking. Limit your intake of sugary drinks, etc. And that is basically how our app works. Let's take a look at it on the other end. Let's say you're a person a little bit older with a slightly higher BMI, and you have high blood pressure, uh, your cholesterol level has tested high, you are a smoker or have been a smoker, uh, you have, you've had a stroke, let's say that you do not regularly do physical activity, and you have had a heart attack, let's say your, doesn't matter at this point, for your sex assigned at birth, 
And do you have any difficulty walking? Let's say yes. When you submit here, you would see that you are at high risk for diabetes, along with some suggestions uh, of what you could possibly do. Uh, schedule a visit with a healthcare provider, begin or increase ex physical activity levels, adopt a healthy balanced diet, et cetera, right? Avoid tobacco use and such. So that is our app and that's basically how it works. So we'll wrap up real quick on the questions. Yeah, did you have anything else, Alfredo, that you uh, wanted to go over on the slide before we yes. jump right so, into yeah. the questions? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, so on the challenges, there were a couple of challenges. I kind of alluded them to them, one being the feature selection. I think we talked about the fact that there are some calculators out there that do have involved blood tests such as A1C or other glucose monitoring things, which obviously are more accurate. Um, the other challenge, and so we tried different models. We evaluated different models. We evaluated decision trees. We evaluated um, gradient boost type of models. We evaluated neural networks. Uh, we ev evaluated su support vector machines. As many models as we could to try to see if, given the limitations of the data, given the fact that we had imbalanced data, which we also used synthetic data methods to help train the model and make it more accurately. And it did improve performance somewhat. Um, we evaluated the best ones. The one that we came up with, with was reliable, uh, good old XGBoost, which is a simple model that's from the Cisco li Learn library. It's simple, it doesn't require a lot of computing power, and it's easy to deploy, and the accuracy was good. We used different evaluation criteria to look at both would it tell you a correct uh, positive response and and the best, you know, when you were false, that you were, had a, a correct negative response. So we looked at those factors as well. I'll let the team kind of elaborate a little bit on the front end versus back end because we did have a front end interf user interface. As you can see, it's taking in information questions and it has to pre-process that data and then feed it into the model. Yeah, just kind of kind of going back a little bit to, to once we decided on which route we were going to take in terms of the data set, the features and things like that. And so in building out the app, one of the things that I started out doing was um, working working with the application using Streamlit. So um, we parsed out um, the activities that we were going to work on. So we, um, Alfredo worked on it, Eugene worked on it, I worked on it. And we're all trying to figure out, you know, we knew the approach we were going to take. We knew how the app, we wanted the app to roll out. So we thought Streamlit was the best route for us to take. So in the beginning for us, Streamlit, you know, it was doing its job until we got to a certain point on the process in the end. And we thought we would bring in Flask as a back end, mm -hmm. uh, which initially we did. Um, but then again, we ran into some issues there. I'm sure we, it could have worked out, but we reverted back once um, to Streamlit was able to put the pre-process and everything on the back end and to Streamlit all together for a more uh, uh, compact app um, with the embedded SQLite uh, database in that. So um, with that said, you know, it all worked out in the beginning. We kind of got it um, from that point in to render, um, but it, it was a challenge in the beginning, but Streamlit did everything for us on the front end. Uh, which was easy, compact web app that was able to roll out something with little less, you know, um, processing power, um, not a lot of data and things like that. And it just worked out best for us. Uh, Eugene, did you have anything that you wanted to add before we open the floor for any questions? Oh, basically, yeah. In the, in the last week, learned so much about the front end and the back end that I think I'm ready for the, the software <laughs> developer boot camp if I needed to be. All right. So, yeah. It was definitely for sure. For sure. Yes. That, that's all I have to say that you pretty much mentioned exactly what happened. So with that said, guys, I, I think, you know, uh, that's going to end uh, our demo um, in introduction to the app. Um, we're going to open the floor for any questions or anything like that, critiques or anything that y'all have seen in the app um, about the process and the journey. Special thanks to four geeks. What was the motivation for this for this topic? Yeah, I, I think the, the motivation, like I mentioned earlier, uh, and that's a good question, Isaiah, is 
is trying to incentivize you know more people to to get the test. Uh, how do you, how do we do that? You can't you know this was a telephone survey, and you know one can say that there's so many other apps out here like that. Why this app? Well, we always think about you know again we were limited with the data, but how do we position this app in a way? to where we can get more people bring the awareness into pre-diabetes, which was hard to determine. It's more, this, this app is more inclined with the data that we have to lean potentially more or less um, to being low risk or to high risk, right? And so we use different techniques to kind of balance out the classes to try and even bring more, bring a balance to the pre-diabetic part. So um, doing the research, right? We had did a lot of research, extensive research, and then we brought in some, some healthcare, some healthcare experts on the back end too to bring in some more domain knowledge. Um, we thought it was best to try and you know go the direction of, you know, maybe we should you incentivize this toward insurance companies, right, for their employ for their employers, right, to um, get discounts for the employees, and and then you know family medicine doctors and so on doing um, um, visits and things like that. We can kind of get some awareness that hey, here's the next step. So. Whenever you see the output there that um, Eugene uh, just demonstrated there, you will see that it gives you a, a list of things that you can do. Uh, and we didn't want to go too much in detail from a, from a, a technical or medical perspective, um, stepping outside of our boundaries, but just wanted to kind of bring that awareness, Isaiah. Uh, I want to add something. That's a great question because, but I know most most people, if you really think about it, or have some family member, I know I do. In my case, it's my it, one, someone that's really close to, to me is my, my dad's girlfriend has diabetes. So, and, and being a biomedical engineer in my career, 30 years working with orthopedic surgeons and cardiologists, there's, I've met surgeons that would literally tell me I'm not operating on that patient because they're diabetic and I know they're not going to. Um, and it's, 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 it's a real problem. So yeah, the idea and of developing something that can kind of make more folks aware of that. Also the other aspect, if you noticed in the slide, there is a correlation between diabetes and cancer. Uh, so this app, uh, you know, could be expanded or this concept anyways, could be expanded to other healthcare factors because we do ask about cholesterol. We do ask about heart attacks and stroke. So obviously there's heart disease applications. There's other just health issues, health risks that you can kind of integrate in something like this to help um, help folks perhaps change their habits, their lifestyles and hopefully early enough where they're in the pre-diabetic or pre-disease state, if you will. Um, and then they can kind of minimize or even reverse whatever potential risks they end up with. If that makes sense. Right. The more data we have, the greater visibility we have. I mean, my uncle has diabetes. So I'm, I'm sure everybody, like you said, has at least one person they know who has diabetes. And if, you know, if we can sophisticated, sophisticatedly model all of this, all of this uh, information properly, then perhaps we can prevent it. I, well, very thorough, very good presentation. Well done. Yeah, and, and one more thing, if I can add that, Isaiah, just imagine, you know, working for an employer or just working in general and you go to the doctor and they say, well, you're diabetic and you have, you don't have the coverage, right? Mm. Um, you know, so those are the things right there that we were trying to, you know, put into play. Like you work for an employer, you come in, you get a discount, right, for even taking a test, right? So now you know what type of coverage you need. So if else fails, you go to the doctor, um, you're covered, right? And, and you're getting the, right, the proper, you know, um, medications and things like that. And also, um, you know, insurance companies are already prepared, you know, um, to be able to cover you in that aspect of it. All right. All right. Awesome. Well, very well done. I got I got a question. Um, so while well, coming from one of your classmates and uh, seeing like everything you guys have done, uh, everything you guys have learned uh, to produce such a great project, I want to give you a standing ovation. Um, but a question would be kind of like if what, what are like some future goals, if you guys have any like for the project or like, um, you know, yeah, for the project. For the idea. Yeah, I think I think uh, with more time, right? Um, there there were some things missing, um, like um, Alfredo was saying earlier, ethnicity, uh, family history, uh, gestational diabetes, where when women are pregnant, they're fifty percent more prone to have diabetes at a certain rate that weren't a part of this data set. So I, I'm thinking with one of the things that we talked about this was having time to you know look through more data sets and and you know get more 
um, significant, you know, features that are indicators of diabetes. So we can kind of, you know, uh, be able to pull those moderate, moderate risk um, patients um, in, in the best position to get coverage. So, yeah, just being able to do that um, would have been of more help, just more time, um, a better data set that we, uh, that we can play around with that kind of touched on the better intricacies. Like, keep in mind, there's other polling surveys out there. This one was from the CDC uh, as well. So it's, uh, but it was a telephone survey. Uh, so we, we did best with, with the data set that we had. Um, and again, we squeezed as much as we could out of it. Uh, uh, trust me, Sebastian can possibly speak for that. We was, we were trying to get to hundred percent, but again, given the data, we, we understood, Hey, and, and again, that's, this was a learning moment for myself was even, even when you're doing all these techniques and things like that, the data, uh, is true, regardless of what type of techniques that you're working with. The data is what it is, and 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 sometimes you 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 may um, not speaking from a variance point, but you may be off a little bit in what you expected to get out of this, right? Um, so we let the data drive us, and the data told us, hey, you're not going to get 95% accuracy out of this, right? But we can get you there because you were you wasn't 95% coming in. Um, in terms of truth of the data. So with that said, we, we squeeze a lot of it, you know, with the different techniques and things that we used and uh, we got it as accurate as possible um, with ROC. Okay. Any other questions, concerns, gripes, critiques, complaints? We, we love to hear it. Okay. So with that said, that's going to end, um, you know, our demonstration, our presentation. And again, we uh, appreciate everybody coming out to come hear us and, and, and be a part of this. And again, thanks to Four Geeks for the opportunity. Um, and I'm sure this is going to, you know, be the jumpstart of all our careers at some point here, Russell. And I've learned so much and there's so much more to learn. Thank you. Awesome. Round of applause. Very well done. Next, up, this, next up, we have Stock Profit with Brian and Hassan. Take it away, guys. Hello, hello, all. My name is Hassan, and my partner is Brian. Pleasure to meet you guys. Good job, guys. By the way, uh, very good project. Loved where that went. So, um, as far as my intro, you know, I come from a background of many different. Uh, industries that include like construction, finance, healthcare, recruiting, um, healthcare insurance. So I could definitely relate to your project. Um, and the list goes on. I, I've been in many different industries. So the reason that I'm here and why I took this boot camp was, uh, you know, I've always been interested in tech and I've always excelled in math and was more of a logical thinker. So, you know, I figured that this would be the right path for me. And as, as of now, Pretty happy with my decision. I enjoyed the boot camp quite a bit, learned so much, and uh, can see how much more there is to learn. And I'm sure Brian will, you know, more so introduce himself when he gets on. Um, unless you want to do so now, Brian. Yeah, yeah, we I could do a little intro because I know um, during the presentation there's uh, a little more. Um, but yeah, my name is Brian Munera. Um, I can I relate to a lot of uh, what Hassan just said. I come from a lot of different <laughs> backgrounds. Um, but I found that the most interesting thing like in the world is kind of like mathematics. And now, now that like, you know, I kind of explore the world much more, I see that data is really that, um, that really that secret that everyone's been looking for. And uh, nonetheless, this machine learning bootcamp has uh, proved me right. So I'm excited. All right, so um, we're gonna move right into uh, the project. Let me just share my screen so you guys can see. All right, hoping that's big enough for everybody. All right, so this is uh, who we are. This is our project, it's a stock profit. And essentially, you know, what we want is to create for an investor and really for ourselves we were more interested in having some sort of tool that allows us to analyze stocks and have you know something solve the problem of this wealth of data and all of the complexities of the market so what it does is it predicts 
10 future days of a stock symbol of your choice. All right. So, yeah, son, before you uh, continue, can you click play so I can like show the whole thing? Or uh, I think it takes over my entire computer if I do. Oh, that. gotcha, gotcha. Okay, no, yeah. I'm sorry. But is this not big enough? Because I can no, it looks, it looks zoom good. in. It looks good. Oh, okay. Yeah, it could look better. So, table of contents. This is uh, essentially what we're going to solve today. We have the problem, the road, the statistics, the technologies that we've used and the solution which is going to be our web application that we're going to show you and we're excited to do so the challenges that we had along the way and then we're going to be open for questions so why stocks um, i kind of hit on it a little bit but you know due to the problems that investors have already and the sheer volume of financial data that's available today you know it only makes sense for us you know as brian and i being you know interested in investing in stocks and you know the statistics behind how, yeah yeah the, the statistics behind how how much how many people that try you know at this game and fail which is like a ridiculous number um of five percent of of traders are actually profitable um which is a ridiculous you know statistic and so we what we wanted to do was you know use the power of ai to you know and look at the market volatility as a indicator and look at the data-driven strategies and provide an investor with the ability to gain financial freedom at the end of the day, which is what everybody's looking for. Fight inflation, you know, with the economy the way that it is, this is why we went down this road. Now, to be very frank, we started down a very different road to start with that was also in the financial market but it was a very new market nfts and uh things of that nature and to realize you know we'll get into that in the challenges but it was uh, an eye-opening experience take it away brian all right so um the road here um so basically uh, up until this point you know it was really hard kind of gaining all this knowledge and putting it all together just because um data science and machine learning is one thing but in order to reach that um i guess like that goal you need to learn a lot of things um very simple things like you know github and um, just your simple like python just like your basic things so it's it's been really hard um but after doing this entire course um and getting to this point where we finally get to you know we're finally set free and kind of letting our knowledge and you know our like curiosity combine um, was something really exciting. Yeah, that was pretty good. You can go on this. Absolutely. Time. So, you know, I hit it on it before, but I think this is a good point, a part to, to just let you guys know of like what the road here consisted of. So we started on a different topic altogether. Um, and in that process, I mean, this was like a boot camp inside of a boot camp, this project, which I, very much appreciated at the end but in the beginning you know learning how much there was in data as far as like what type of sources there were how much data they were going to provide um, the challenges of how they're going to you're going to receive that data and a big problem that we had in the beginning was nested data and how to extract all of that nested data which is going to either be a list or dictionaries or a list of dictionaries or the sort. So we we went through all of those speed bumps. And then another speed bump to get us here was, you know, just because it runs locally doesn't mean it runs on the web. So, you know, getting to know all of these different technologies and the nuances of them and all of these different error codes and having to troubleshoot, I think troubleshooting and reading your code back a hundred million times just to see where the problem was, that was like the best learning experience so far. All right. Uh, so the fun part came at the very end when things started to work. And I'm sure everybody can relate to that. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah. So um, some facts behind the project. Um, Hassan mentioned earlier that, you know, kind of your average, your average day trader, you know, just only 5% make it. And I'm sure everybody has tried to, I guess, like day trade. Um, so I'm sure that the percentage is, is it's very accurate. Um, aside from day trading, we could look at hedge funds. Uh, hedge funds are multi-million dollar companies that manage a lot of money. 
built by in, very intelligent people that <clears> use <throat> a lot of these um a lot of these uh like machine learning stuff so you know only five percent of hedge funds return five percent a year which is a very small number um prediction accuracy uh the reason like kind of like why we did this project and how, the outcome um any small improvement or um you know any small improvement within the the accuracy of the model um can be the difference between major profits and you know big losses um also you know the market the market is prime it's a prime area for uh machine learning because there's so much data generated every single day um and not only that it's, it's been around for so long and there's there's a lot of different variables that you can include into the model so it's just it's a perfect it's a perfect area all right so now as far as technologies that we used and the architecture we leveraged a learning uh, a language learning model and python to collect the data um, we collected the data through apis using you know probably our fourth or fifth option that we found after doing so much research which was uh, a site called tingo and the reason why we chose that was it gave us enough data um, where a lot of the ones go five years back um, this one allowed us to be kind of dynamic and to see how much data a stock goes back because every company is different and allow us to utilize that in how much data we can feed into our our model to train it so the older the company you know the more data the better the model is going to be and we then used uh, numpy and pandas to process that data manipulate it and to kind of visualize what we had there and then we um, also used the relative strength index as an indicator um, you know, we paired that with the adjusted close prices of that stock symbol and the adjusted close price of the SPY, which is, you know, uh, an, in the, uh, an ETF fund, a trust that, you know, is very commonly used to compare it against, as well as um, the volatility index. So we use the adjusted close prices from those things, put them um, into our data frame and as, as indicators. And then we also created... Um, the differences of the one day, five day, 30 day and 45 day lag prices um, as indicators as well to train the model. We then use scikit-learn and uh, to analyze and train them our machine learning model and then Git and Streamlit and render really to deploy it and make it public. All right. And then communicate with one another as uh, having a teammate inside of this. And so now I guess it would be good time to share our web application with you and if you guys can uh, yep show it over here feel free to throw in some stock symbols of choice if you'd like to see them yeah so um you want to you want to start it or you want me to do the uh, intro here yeah go ahead Okay. Yeah. So um, basically, this is uh, this is the landing screen. Uh, the second you click the the link to the website, um, you're greeted by our um, you know kind of like our project name, Stock Profit. Um, it's it's a web app that lets you analyze stock data and not only that, most importantly, predicts the next ten days of of the price of your chosen stock. Um, so this is our company logo because it's all fueled by AI. Um, and here you see that tabs on the left that you can kind of like look through. Um, so this is our stock analysis uh, web page. Uh, here you can, you choose the stock you want to look at. Um, you know, we could keep it at Apple or um, yeah, we could keep it at Apple. The start date, it can be all the way back to like wherever you want, um, but it's shown the past year. So here you kind of have like your price movements all the way until like the last year. So you can analyze the stock of your choice. <clears throat> Here you have your chart, your annual return percentage per year. Um, and here you have your fundamental data. You kind of see how much money the company has in the bank, uh, 100 billion, that's pretty good. Uh, annual balance sheet, you know, anything they owe, income statements. And you also get the top 10 latest news um, for that stock. So not only before you even go to your prediction, you, you're kind of like well-rounded into um, what you know what you should expect or what you should look forward to um so hassan could show you kind of like the stock predictor here um yeah so we'll we'll, we'll 
we'll go ahead and choose a different stock other than Apple. Actually, let's start with Apple. Um, okay. This this way we can compare it to the price to see. So, so AAPL. AAPL, your uh, ticker symbol. And then what, once we click the predict button, it's going to post the 10 future predicted days as well as a chart. And, you know, from what we've learned about, you know, this project and how we would take it into the future as far as like next steps um, would be more so looking at what direction our model thinks it's going to go as opposed to the actual pricing. But obviously, you know, how it's built right now, it gives us 10 days in the future of the, the last of the predicted prices. Um, and if we compare uh, to the 328, 329, you know, you're going to notice that it's right around the same price as is in the stock analysis tab. And it looks like this one, it thinks that it's going to go down. So we can choose another one, go back to stock analysis or stock. So here we have the, how many, how many uh, ticker symbols do we get to choose from again? There's thousands. Um, as of right now, it asks for a stock symbol. Now it will take um, like currencies and such uh, because those are, at ticker symbols, but as of right now, the model is trained to work on stocks. So, you know, it's another thing for the future of us, you know, training this and, and, and working on this train um, algorithm to be pretty accurate when it comes to cryptocurrencies and currency exchanges and such. But we can try, you know, we, we really started this doing like NVIDIA. So, you know, that would probably be a good stock to check right now. So which, uh, NVIDIA... We also tested this on, at this point, about 30 stocks. You know, I went with like a list of the top 100. And it, as far as it being accurate when it comes to a stock, we, you know, we were pretty happy with the accuracy. Now, obviously, the further you get from today into the future, when it comes to predictions, the further mo the model is going to be unrealistic. But, you know, as far as like the first four days, we've always seen the first four days being, you know, right, right in the right ranges. So does anybody um, have a stock symbol of choice that they'd like to look at? We don't want to take too much time though. And we also have the ability to, you know, make these uh, charts bigger so you can see the chart up close. So if we look at Tesla and you want to pull up the chart, yeah, there you go. And it provides, you know, every two day jump in the date and the range of the predicted price. Yeah. So you want to, um, right. okay. All right, so now we can move over uh, to the challenges. And, you know, the challenges, uh, let me, uh, you yeah, guys you gotta, see my screen still? One no, you got you to take over. Let me take over. Uh, as far as the challenges are concerned, you know, really what we touched on before of integrating the different data sources and getting all of the APIs to work and then in the orders that they need to work. So, you know, when we had to change up to be, create this to be more dynamic and to input any stock symbol, uh, the one problem that I was gonna have was getting all of the dates to go back into this, you know, in the, in the data frames to be lined up. And in order to do that, you know, we had to, you know, create a function that actually looked into the, use the API to look into the source to see how far back that data went for that ticker symbol of, your, of choice to then feed that into the rest of the uh, application and, and run the model and train it because it trains the model every single time. This is not pulling anything from a database. And then manipulating the nested data was a huge challenge. You know, it definitely taught me, you know, a lot about JSON and how to, you know, extrapolate the data and reach deep into like a, a list of dictionaries and pull out the things that I needed out of there, um, especially when we were in the previous project of uh, the NFTs, where it all also on that topic, you know, picking a data source that also offers a lot of um, troubleshooting and documentation was very important, which is another reason that forced us to kind of switch over to stocks because with NFTs, it's such a new technology and OpenSea being the biggest exchange for that, you know, their documentation was almost non-existent. Um, so instead of waiting around, I'd probably still be waiting for a Discord reply or a forum reply right now uh, to work on this app. 
And then deploying the app to the web was another challenge as far as, you know, when I got it to run locally, I came up across numerous errors that would not allow me to deploy it to the web after the fact. When you finally think you've, you've got it right, uh, no, no, no. So, you know, that was also another learning experience and a challenge and a speed bump that we had to get over. And that's when we did get over that, that's when the fun started. This is, so now we'll open it up to the questions. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, I'm actually curious. I, I saw where you mentioned that you can go like five days, 10 days, whatever the numbers were, 30 days. You know, what, what approach did you take or technique? Did, was, it, is it, uh, was it a REMA or anything like that? Did you use to kind of like Oh, I, I left that part out. Great, How did you get that stationary? Yeah. So, no, so to create the lags, uh, you reminded me of something else. We ended up uh, landing on a ridge model after trying a linear regression model, LSTM models, and others. You know, we ended up finding the accuracy that we were looking for inside of a linear ridge model. So that's the algorithm and evaluation metrics that we used. Um, now, as far as the lags, it was more so when I realized that the price was less important than the differences as far as like the, the training, the model, creating the differences between the prices of, of one day, five day, 30 day, 45 day was going to be more valuable to the training of the model and it noticing differences um, and, and comparing, you know, to those three, the spy, you know, the volatility index and the stock symbol that, that turned out to be the most feasible for us. So, you know, we just did some calculations um, and showed it the difference from each index or each ticker symbol of the of its one day price for each one and the difference of it, calculating the difference. Five day, we calculated the difference um, of the mean. So you just, you know, create the average of it and show it the average. And that was really it. Did that answer your question? Yeah, that's perfect. I, I was wondering how you did that. Uh, sounds cool. Thank you. Did you have, did you compensate for like different types of, you mentioned then, how did you get the data, like getting the data and, and compensating for how to, how to extract the data through APIs? Or so to, I, we got it through Tingo, which is uh, you know, a pretty large data source where, you know, when you research all the different APIs you can get, uh, I think they're in the top five. So we use them and luckily for stocks, uh, you know, the data comes back somewhat clean. Like it, it didn't take a lot of cleaning like like it did previously. I, I spent so much time cleaning the NFT data because it doesn't come back anything like each other. But when you pull any ticker symbol, whether it's a ETF fund or a stock or whatever, they all come back with a high, low, close, you know, adjusted close, um, pretty much all the same thing. So I just had to clean it just just a little bit but they're already comparable to each other at that point so it was more so you know putting it all together and then creating the indicators and training the model on it. did that answer your question alfredo yeah thank you any other we... questions good job thank yeah, you definitely great job so I, I can see where it took a lot of work to put that in man it definitely did so you know this project you know was definitely been a source of motivation for me you know looking ahead uh you know i see my future as a developer working with some company that deals with data and problems that i'm passionate about you know kind of like you know why we chose stocks you know i'm into ai web3 metaverse and there's many more so you know i'm looking forward to that but what i'd like to achieve in the immediate future you know, to find a role that allows me to continue building my data science knowledge and skills and habits in a place that, you know, has good collaboration, kind of like how we had here with Four Geeks and mentorship, which is also, you know, something I have to really appreciate about Four Geeks, you know, providing the space, the opportunity to learn. Grateful to Samir and Sebastian for uh, the patience that they had and all, all their help and my classmates for investing their time and taking it seriously. It was much appreciated. And all the people in the background as well, because, you know, I have career support, you know, and everybody I've talked to, Alyssa, Laura, they've all been amazing. So thanks to everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bravo. Bravo. Brian? Uh, no, I yeah, know. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Um, I couldn't be more excited for what's to come, given um, 
we learned all these skills and you know with these skills we can really uh you know let our curiosity lead so i'm excited for the future all right well that will complete our project very well done very well done i, I wanted to add something for all the groups i think i think doing this presentation this is going to be published on youtube it, it, it's really important that you guys continue to publish your work post it on the internet let people know because what exists within your mind is like it, it's totally non-transparent mm -hmm. like nobody can perceive that so just make sure you continue to publish that's that's what's going to make all the difference i promise I've, I've seen it time and again the people who show the world what they can do those are the ones that get the opportunity very well done Appreciate i'm, I'm proud of proud of all you guys Good advice. Thank, Thank you. you. Would anybody like uh, some final words before we before we wrap this up? Well, I, I can just say a final word as the uh, as the instructor. Uh, I think all you guys did great. Um, I love to see uh, where you guys are now from when I first met you and where you first started. And I see the progress that you've made. And uh, you guys have learned so much in not a lot of time. And I know it was intense. Uh, you guys uh, sacrificed a lot. You guys sacrificed your Friday nights. Uh, yeah, I know you sacrificed a lot, of, a lot of weekends working on things. And... Um, uh, now you guys are going to uh, reap the rewards of that when you enter the job market. But, you know, the, the, and as we talked, uh, the, you know, the, the job market can be challenging as well. Um, you know, it comes with a lot of ups and downs uh, in, in the job search process. But, you know, you just got to keep your head up and uh, stay persistent uh, with it. And I'm sure you guys are all going to go on to do great things and have success. And I, I think it's been mentioned a couple of times. But, you know, just keep on learning, like, you know, what, what we learned in this course, um, you know, the, the, there, there's still so much out there that can be expanded on. And I encourage you guys to take the time and, you know, uh, keep developing your skills, keep practicing. As Isaiah mentioned, uh, you know, keep working on pro projects and publishing those projects. Um, create, a, create a personal online pro portfolio that you can share on your LinkedIn and share on your resume, because that's all gonna benefit you at the end. And, um, you know, just keep adding, like, as because, you know, as, as we know in this business, tech, new technology is coming out every week. So you guys wanna stay on top of that. And uh, always put those new technologies to use and, um, you know, and, 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 and create, new, create new things with those new technologies. And, and um, you know, showcase showcase it on your on your portfolios. So that's my advice, and uh, I wish you guys all the best. Thank you. Future. Thanks. Appreciate that, Samir. Uh, I want to say something here. Uh, thanks for for Sheik to give me the opportunity to, to stay here as a mentor. Uh, for know you guys and be part of your cohort. Obviously, Samir, thank you for your, for your time. You are a great guy, a great uh, teacher. Uh, thank you for all the learnings that you, you give us. And again, thank you guys for uh, understanding uh, the dif dif different that uh, we have in old cultures and all the stuff related to this. Uh, for me, that uh, was really good to, to pass some time with you guys uh, to learn about you, uh, about yourself, about your careers, about all the, the, um, the information that you provide me uh, to know you. And uh, well, we we are in touch. You know that uh, you can send me some message from me or from Samir or, or for everything here in, in, in Portuguese. And we we are we we stay here to well to work uh, together in the future maybe. Thank you for those kind of words.